watchful and scientific about everything we do. And, and so, a model merged with a very spiritual model of transformative influence. And this tension is essentially the diversity which exists between the views of Shinran Shonin and Ren Yoshonin. So Shinran being very intellectual and very uh, deep and, and elevated to carry this message to everyone. And uh, besides being willing to refer to the pure land as blissful eternity, which you would never imagine Shinran is doing, there's a story about Renyo that I don't like to be neutral about it. That Renyo Shonin had this uh, uh, housekeeper for about 20 years that had helped him working around the Honganji. And the housekeeper from time to time would say things like, you know, Momonshu, I'm sorry, but to tell you the truth, I just don't know if I'm going to go to the Pure Land when I die or not. And you know, Shinran would never have said that. Shinran would never have said that. Because he wants to be too technical to make all the sutras match every word he says or something? Well, Shinran would be, he, he's got to stay with this woman for 20 years. He knows that her heart is open to this teaching and she doesn't know it, right? So he just says, I'll take care of it. In other words, don't worry about it. Because they're very different personalities and uh, <laughs> accessed in this life or at its end, entering this realm, it's like being on a train whose inevitable destination is enlightenment. And that's a phrase that I got from Reverend Robert Sasaki, and I finally remembered to ask him who it was that said that, and it was a, not a famous guy at all, but a Zen Roshi from Fukuoka named Kasan. And he said, uh, when Laverne Sensei was young, I'm not sure how young, you know, maybe late 20s, early 30s, not a kid, but he had gone to do meditation with this Kasan Roshi. Kasan Roshi says, Sensei, are you enlightened? And Kasan Roshi said to him, I am on a train whose inevitable destination is enlightenment. And I, I really like that phrase. Let me jump ensures access to Amita's realm for anyone who will sincerely, serenely, and authentically turn his or her thoughts to Amita and his project of universal liberation. This turning thoughts toward can be accomplished by saying the Buddha's name, the Buddha's name in conjunction with a phrase meaning to revere and rely upon. For example, Namo Midabus, or Kimyo Jinji Pong, Mikikol Nirai, Namo This foundational promise, numbered 18 in the most traditional list of 48 vows, expresses a vast caring and unconditional acceptance. It is hard to understand such a primal vow without a person or community of persons being the subject of the compassionate intention it embodies. There's, it can't be an accident. There's something like what we mean by intention going on here. There's, there's just got to be a little model of what a person is for what the Buddha is. Because there's kindness being directed to us. Uh, it's a literary term. There, there's a Perhaps you remember that's where one thing symbolizes another, or where the whole is used for the part. Or <laughs> oh, I forgot the, the, the literary term, uh, the literary uh, technique where you do that. But in, in Buddhism, in, in Ryan of Buddhism, and particularly in Pure Land, we really get a, a, a situation where Amida.